Greetings everyone. This is part two of the second lecture of Tripoli 23. And in this part, we're still discussing the electric field and how it is generated. Now, uh, previously, I have shown you an example of how to calculate an electric field of a uh, uniform distribution around a ring. Okay, so in uh, notice that this ring actually has uh, symmetry along the uh, x-axis or the y-axis. Okay, so because of this symmetry, uh, at the electric field at this point can be uh, can be uh, calculated or it can be shown that the electric field at this point is only along the z-axis. Okay, now if we have uh, the normal uh, the uh, common distributions would be a line charge and a surface charge. And for if you uh, if you encounter a problem like this, you should exploit the symmetry of the problem. Okay, so you need to identify which coordinate system is the most convenient to use. So uh, you have three: is it uh, spherical? Is it uh, cylindrical? Is it uh, Cartesian? So if you have a problem like that, you'd always mind the symmetry. And with certain symmetries, you will. Uh, determine what kind of coordinate system you'd use okay so which uh, coordinates uh, with which coordinates with the field does not vary or which components of the field are not present due to symmetry okay so for example uh, the electric field point P due to a point charge at the origin only varies with respect uh, to the distance between P so if you have a uh, some uh, Cartesian, uh, so plane uh, space like this, you have a point charge and a point P, a random point P. Okay, so this is your point charge, a random point P. Okay, so uh, as we know, the electric field for a point charge is uh, will only vary with the distance r or the vector between the uh, origin and your point P. Okay, and this r is actually. Uh, or actually defines the direction of the electric field because the direction of the electric field is along a r hat. Okay? So by symmetry, uh, movement along a t hat and a theta hat, uh, uh, there, uh, the field does not vary moving along these two uh, unit vectors. Okay? So this is what we call a radial symmetry. So to compute the electric field, you uh, these are the steps you need to follow. So recall that this is the oh wait sorry this should be this should be differential okay small electric field okay due to the uh, existence of a infinitesimal charge. Okay. So the first step is you find a generic point x y z. Where you want to evaluate the electric field. Okay, so normally we just use XYZ. So the coordinates of the generic point charge, so you, where is the point charge located, call it Q, at some points X prime, Y prime, and Z prime. Divide the charge into infinitesimal points, that's why it's DQ. Okay. So it could be a volumetric charge distribution, surface charge distribution, or line charge distribution. And find the distance from uh, Q and P. The distance is the norm of this vector, right? the vector P minus the vector Q. The unit vector is just uh, the vector divided by the norm, so that's by definition. And just need to set up the integral to uh, get the contributions of each infinitesimal charge. Okay, so let's look at the electric field due to a line charge. So consider an infinitely long line charge. Okay. If we consider the symmetry of the uh, line charge, so it has uh, it, it's a distribution. The electric field is uh, the electric field due to this infinitesimal charge and due to this infinitesimal charge oppose each other in some directions. Okay, and if you sum or if you take the sum of these differential electric fields, you get a total electric field that is only uh, that is only uh, we call this. It is only dependent with rho. Okay, 
or there's only in the direction of a rho, okay? So how did that happen? So it's only in the direction of a rho because of uh, the symmetry of this line charge. So if we maintain rho and z constant and we vary uh, the angle, okay? So if uh, we look at it here at a different angle, the same effects will have uh, will uh, the same effect will uh, happen as here to here. Okay, so some components of the electric field will be cancelled and what will be left is your a rho hat. Okay, so that's what we call azimuthal symmetry. And if we maintain the angle and uh, phi constant, if we vary the point along z, let's say somewhere here, okay, it will not affect the problem also. Because if you have a charge here that is uh, acting, uh, that's uh, giving an electric field on this point, there's also some mirroring charge here, since this is an infinitely long uniform line charge, that counteracts the electric field at this point. And again, the comp some components cancel out and you'll just get a rho hat here. Okay. So, now we try to solve the electric field at a generic point P with, uh, that is defined by X, Y, and Z. Okay. Or, this P is since we're using a cylindrical coordinate system, this P is defined by some rho, phi, and z. Okay? So, there you go. The distance vector of R then is from the origin to the point of interest, which is some point rho, phi, z. This vector from the origin is rho a rho hat. Okay? So, why is that? By definition, your rho is uh, the distance from your uh, z-axis to the point. Okay? So that's rho a rho hat. And since it's from the origin, there's no z component. Now we have a uh, we have a infinitesimal charge dq here has a vector uh, distance vector q from the point of interest. So, since uh, the length of this vector is already rho, and it has a z component, which is just uh, defined as z, because this is the point zero, zero, z, then r prime, sorry, the distance r is this one. So, that's r minus r prime, where r prime is the distance of the point from the origin. And since it's from the origin, and we're only varying along, we're only moving along the z-axis. We have our, uh, we have uh, z a z hat here, and we get the total or the the distance vector between your uh, infinitesimal charge to your point of interest. That's rho a rho hat minus z a z hat. Right. So by using this data, we can now set up the differential electric field due to this point. To be this expression right here. So your dq, so this is your differential charge, is equal to your line charge distribution or line charge density multiplied by your infinitesimal length. In this case, the infinitesimal, infinitesimal length is along the z-axis. So this infinitesimal length is rho l dz. Okay. So, uh, this is the magnitude squared of the distance vector, and this is the distance vector divided by the magnitude of the distance vector. So, since we have no variation along the z-axis, or az hat, so this will be 0, and we'll have this expression for our differential electric field. So, we can now uh, solve for the electric field like this. So we just need to integrate this differential electric field from on the bounds of your z. So since it's an infinite line charge, your z is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So that's the bounds right here. So how to solve this? You just let your z be equal to this expression 
and uh, by consequence, your DZ becomes this, okay? And your bounds will also change. If Z is infinity, negative infinity, what's the value of alpha? So since Z is at negative infinity, then tangent of negative pi over 2 is negative infinity. Therefore, alpha is at negative pi over 2. Same here, but in this case, Z is infinity. So this is also a change in bounds. All right. So with this, we substitute these values to the original expression. And this, sorry, this to this right here. And we get uh, this expression right here and this expression right here with respect to alpha. So you factor out rho squared. So rho will cancel. Okay, you'll have 1 over rho left here. And what will be inside is 1 plus tangent squared alpha. Okay. Tangent squared alpha. And then... Okay. And then uh, since 1 plus tangent squared alpha is second squared, uh, second squared alpha raised to the 3 halves, you'll have a second cube alpha here. So this will just cancel with each other. You have a second alpha left at the uh, denominator, and that is equal to cosine alpha. So just integrate this from this uh, on this uh, uh, interval, okay? And you'll get uh, this sine alpha. Evaluate it. You'll, you'll get two, okay? And finally. The expression for your electric field is equal to this value right here. Okay. So that is the electric field due to an infinitely long line charge along the z-axis. So it's this expression right here. So some notes. The electric field of an infinite line charge is directed rigidly outward or into the line charge. So, rigidly outward if it's positive, since the electric field emanates from the charge. And if it's negative, then the electric field converges into the line charge. So, for example, if it's positive, let's say this is your uh, line charge distribution. The electric field goes outward like this. If it's negative, uh, let's say it's color blue. If it's negative, so this is your line charge, then your electric field goes inside that charge. Okay? So now, in looking at this expression, your electric field actually varies with the distance from the line charge. Okay? As you go further away from your line charge, the electric field magnitude is decreased. All right, so defined by this function right here. So it has a, an inverse relationship with the distance, basically. So that's what it, that's what is stated here. All right, now let's look at the electric field due to a sheet of charge. So for a sheet of charge, you can think of it as, you can think of it as a, a different, uh, composed of differential strips that is just considered as a uniform line charge okay so this differential strip is a uniform line charge and due to symmetry if you look at this sheet of charge that is resting on a zy plane if we have another sheet uh, strip right here with identical properties as the sheet right here so the electric field from this point is acting on this point at the x-axis and you can see that this electric field opposes this electric field in the y-axis right here. Therefore, what's left is the x uh, component of the electric field. Therefore, we can say that the symmetry right here is that this, uh, this uh, infinite sheet of charge only, only, uh, only outputs or only results into an x direction of an electric field okay so recall then for a line charge that we have this expression right here so this differential sheet of charge can be uh, written in terms of this okay rho is the distance between 
the sheet of charge, sorry, the line charge to your point. So if it's on the x-axis, let's say that's the point x0,0. zero. zero. Okay. So the distance between this point to this point okay, is equal to this point, so here, minus this point right here. Okay. Then we have the magnitude of the distance, that's x squared plus y squared. Square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay. And the x component in this case. So since we're only looking at the x component right here, since again by symmetry, the y component is cancelled. So we're left with the x component. We're then projecting this distance into the x-axis or the x-direction. Okay, so we're projecting this distance in the x-direction. What would be the value of that? So recall, if we're trying to project this vector into the x-axis, we're getting the dot product of this vector with respect to ax hat. So we're actually getting the projection. Okay, so how to do that? Knowing that the angle between... Uh, the x-axis and this vector is equal to beta. Then, the magnitude of this vector along the x-axis would be equal to would be equal to the uh, what do you call this? Would be equal to the magnitude of this vector multiplied to the magnitude of the this vector okay, times cosine of the angle between them. Alright, so that's where this term came from, cosine beta. Alright, and this cosine beta is just equal to the x component of this vector divided by the magnitude of this vector. Alright, so that's x over square root of x squared plus y squared. Alright, so now we can uh, simplify this term. We'll just get this expression right here. And you now integrate this term with respect to y. So that's your differential strip right here. Okay? So just integrate that, and y is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay? So uh, we'll just have a note here that this expression has this uh, integration, uh, definite integral, indefinite integral right here. We just substitute the bounds for that. And we'll get this expression right here. And finally, the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge is this. Purely dependent on the uniform distribution on the sheet. And epsilon naught, which is constant. So since it's uniformly distributed, rho s is constant, epsilon naught is constant. Uh, uh, the 2 is constant. Okay. So that means the magnitude of the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge is constant. Okay. So just some note, at the negative x-axis or at the back of the sheet, the electric field faces the diff on a different, uh, the electric field points to a different direction. Okay. So in general then, the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge can be expressed by this, where a sub n is equal to the normal vector to your uh, sheet. Okay. The normal vector of your sheet. Okay, so that's the perpendic uh, vector perpendicular and pointing away. So this is important, pointing away from the surface. The electric field intensity is constant everywhere. And the surface charge density is positive if the electric field, uh, if the surface charge density is positive, the electric field emanates from the sheet of charge. And if the line charge is negative, sorry, this should be uh, surface. The surface charge density is negative, the electric field goes into the surface. So this is your surface right here. Okay. The electric field goes away from the surface like this if it's positively uh, if the charge distribution is positive, okay? And it goes inside if it's negative. Okay? All right. So an example. A line charge with charge density equal to 10 here is at this point Okay, so this point on the uh, on the z-x plane, 
a sheet of charge with surface charge density equal to negative 1 is resting on the xy plane right here. What is the electric field at some point 2, 3, 5? So if you look at the side view, it's something like this. Uh, this line charge has a vector, a distance vector between the chosen point right here. Therefore, the electric field due to the positively charged line charge is along this direction to the uh, is along the di direction of the distance vector d. For the uh, surface charge, the electric field is going into the charge since it's negatively char uh, going into the surface since it's negatively charged right here. Right? So now it's just it looks like a force body diagram if you think about it. The force here plus the force here is your total force. Right? So what is the total force, quote unquote? Of the on of uh, acting on this point right here. So first, let's look at the distance d. Okay, so the distance d is negative two ax hat plus two az hat. Where did that came, come from? That's the point here minus where your uh, your uh, uh, line charge is located, which is here. Okay, so it's this. So there's a projection along ax hat and along az hat. Okay. The magnitude is just this. And finally, the uh, vector, the unit vector, is equal to this expression right here. So the electric field due to the line charge is equal to the charge density divided by 2 pi epsilon naught times the magnitude of the distance times the unit vector of your distance vector. Okay. So you get this expression right here. Surface charge density is this divided by 2 times epsilon naught. So that's just by definition. And the direction is along AZ. Okay? So the charge density is negative. And the direction is along AZ because that is the uh, that is the normal vector to your sheet. Okay? And it's equal to this. Now you just add them and you'll get your uh, total electric field right here. And this is the final answer. Alright. So, any questions with that? Okay, sorry. That was by habit. <laughs> so, currently not in a lecture or anything. Anyway. So, we can take a short break here before we proceed. So, for the next topic, we have streamlines and sketches of fields. Given an expression of your electric field. Okay, E. How can you sketch the electric field? So take, for example, a cross-section of a line charge. So this is your line charge. Okay? So this is a top view. Uh, how do we sketch the electric field? Well, maybe some random lines indicating the direction of the electric field. Does it look good? Uh, I don't. Un you can't understand anything about it, actually. Okay. So let's say, uh, let's vary the length for a higher intensity of fields like this figure right here. So since the closer you are to the line charge, the stronger the electric field, then it's something like this. The lines become smaller as you go further away. Okay. So it kind of tells you how strong the electric field is at, at that point. Okay. Or we have thicker lines for higher intensity. So they all have the same length, but uh, just neither is thicker since the intensity of the electric field here is stronger. Right? So uh, let's look at that. So the arrows show the direction of the field at every point along the line. And the separation of the lines is uh, the separation of the lines is inversely proportional to the strength of the field. Right? So these lines are called streamlines. So given a general uh, electric field Let's say in, a, in two dimensions, uh, we have no component along the z, okay, in this case. So we're only in the xy plane. The equation of the streamline uh, is obtained by solving this differential equation right here. So um, how, how do we interpret something like this? Well, if we have a streamline that looks like this, recall that the... Uh, Derivative of this curve with respect to x is equal to the slope of the tangent line at that point. And that is where the direction of the electric field is. 
it's always tangent, sorry, it's always tangent to the curve. Alright? And this electric field has a y component and an x component. Okay? So if you get the ratio of the y component and the x component, we get the we kind of uh, getting the slope of the tangent line at this point. Okay? So we are kind of getting the slope of the tangent line at this point because the tangent line at this point indicates the electric field. So if you get the magnitude of your y component divided by the x component, like this, it's the same as getting the slope of the curve at that point. So that is where this equation of the streamline came from. Okay. So for example, we have the electric field here given by this equation. Find the equation of the streamline passing through the point P defined by your uh, Cartesian coordinates. So that's just a differential equation, e y over ex. So the differential equation dy over dx equals the y component divided by the x component, like this. And you just simplify that, this is cancelled. This is equal to negative cotangent to y. Now, to solve this differential equation, you just need to separate the uh, two equations. Or sorry, the two variables. In this case, it's dy divided by negative cotangent y to y. And dx is transferred here. And that's what happened here. All right. And uh, this tangent to y is equal to 1 over cotangent to y. So next is you just integrate both sides. You get x is equal to you integrate the y component. You get this. Okay. So this is a constant. If you transpose it, let's just rename it as c, plus, c prime. It's still a constant. Okay. And we multiply it by 2. It's still a constant. Okay. And next is uh, we get the uh, expo uh, natural exponent of both sides. Okay. And we chose to uh, let go of this c prime, make it k. So it became k because this k is equal to e to the c prime. Okay. So now the equation for your streamlines is this ke raised to 2x equals cosine of 2y. Okay. So for next is we need to get the value of this k right here. So the value of that k is dependent on the point P. So you just need to substitute that point. So that's x equals 0.5, y equals pi over uh, 10. And substitute that, solve for k, you get k is equal to 0 0.298. And finally, just substitute that to your original streamline equation like this here. And you'll get this expression for the streamline. So this is the equation of the streamline passing through the point P. Right. So the streamline, what you saw right here, is actually a family of curves right, where the value of K is dependent on the point where it passes through. Okay? So that's the ex an example of your streamlines. Okay, so that's for your Cartesian coordinates. So if you have polar coordinates, for example, or cylindrical coordinates, if you want to solve for the streamline of that, assuming that uh, there, there is no Z component again, then uh, it's just the same as getting the slope. Okay? So it's just the same again as getting the slope, but in this case, it's actually... Uh, Let's say this is your, uh, it has a, uh, sorry, wait, let me redraw that better. Okay. So if this is your streamline and it's expressed in rho and uh, phi. Okay. So it has a component along the rho axis, which is somewhere here, like right here. It has a component along the phi axis, which is somewhere here. Okay, so again, it's still a slope, but in this case, it's the slope along, slope along uh, your, uh, defined by your phi and your, uh, your rho and your phi components. Okay, so in this case, the slope is equal to the component along phi divided by the component along rho, which is equal to the uh, arc length due to your phi component 
So, the arc length is equal to rho d phi divided by d rho. So, this is how you'll get the streamline due to uh, polar coordinates. Okay? So, you can think of this again. This is the differential length across or differential length component on the f uh, 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 along the phi uh, direction. And this is the differential length component along the raw direction. It can actually translate this in other coordinate systems like the, uh, for example, if you want to get uh, the streamline expressed in R and theta, then it's the same. If we get the ratio of E theta and E R, like this, and that is equal to the differential, differential length along uh, theta, which is R D theta, and the differential length along r hat, which is dr. Okay? So that's the uh, that's how you get the streamlines on different uh, on other coordinate systems. Okay? And that ends the lecture. If you have any questions, uh, just post a comment. Okay? And see you in the next video.